responses. The member for Beaches East York. Mr. Speaker, one year ago, people across Ukraine were launched into a panic, having to flee their country and experiencing a type of terror that is difficult to even put into words. Their country was at war. As Russian tanks began rolling into Ukraine, the rest of the world watched in horror. <clears throat> Sanctions and other actions were tried by many governments, including ours in Canada. With bravery and courage that surpasses their size, Ukraine's military has held its ground, reclaiming control and fending off Russian attempts in advance to advance in the East, where battles are continuing to this day. What has struck me throughout the past year is the resilience of Ukrainian people. It has always become clear through times of extreme crisis the ability for humans to form connections and create community, despite tragic circumstances. Last year, Canada and Ukraine forged a connection of their own. The Canada-Ukraine Foundation and Ukrainian-Canadian Congress established a partnership. Ukraine Humanitarian Appeal and Joint Ukrainian Humanitarian Relief Committee, UHRC, to efficiently and cost-effectively deliver crucial humanitarian assistance to Ukraine and Ukrainians displaced to their neighboring countries by war. This alliance represents the essential collaboration both our countries are strengthened by. Around the globe, Ukrainian flags were placed in windows, donations were made, and regular people took a stand against the tyranny of the Russian government. In my own riding of Beaches East York, I saw selfless displays of hope, compassion, and humanity. One of my residents, Kosta Demirov, came to Canada as a Bulgarian refugee in 1990. Knowing firsthand the hardships and struggles newcomers displaced by war face, Kosta, a conscientious developer who created a purpose-built rental building so needed in our riding and every corner of the city, of the country, took a widely avoided risk in the developer world and offered Ukrainians new to Toronto a place to call home in his seven-story building on Main Street at Kingston Road. He now rents 28 units, over 40% of the whole building, <clears throat> to Ukrainian families new to Canada. It is people like Costa who fill us with hope in these difficult times. Sunflowers have long been a beloved symbol of Ukraine, Ukrainian national identity. Maybe you've seen the video of a Ukrainian woman in the southern port city of Henechesk giving sunflower seeds to armed Russian soldiers, saying, take these seeds so sunflowers grow here when you die. Following the sunflower movement, my own team and I crafted the initiative Plant Sunflowers for Peace, handing out sunflower seeds at the door and across our riding. Watching the sunflowers grow became a symbol of optimism and reminded us of Ukraine's bravery. Another amazing Be uh, Beaches East York resident, Ron Wilford, made and distributed blue and yellow ribbons for Ukraine at many rallies across Toronto, where he advocated for peace and had meaningful conversations with fellow attendees with and without Ukraine heritage roots. Ukrainians are fighting for democracy, independence, and the future of our world as we know it. In times of war, a country can only achieve their goals effectively through the influence of leadership. President Volodymyr Zelensky stepped up and has led with integrity and honor. He emulates the bravery and determination of Ukrainians. His country's admirable resilience to not succumb to the downfall of war demonstrates the meaning behind nationhood. Through his efforts and leadership, he continually projects the spirit of his nation for freedom. The meaning of victory comes in different shapes and sizes. We should all be doing our part to assist in supporting and building awareness in any way we can. On this journey to justice, it is important that there are leaders like President Zelensky. Recognize, I recognize his strong and brave leadership that I am hopeful will lead Ukraine to peace and healing. He is a role model for all of us in this room and beyond. Yesterday, I visited the exhibit, The Year of Resilience, presented by our Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. I was so struck by the people, structures, and landscapes portrayed. A group of teens posing for a yearbook photo in a bombed out building. A teacher with a bloody face in an apartment complex. 
a father making a heart gesture as his wife and daughter went by in an evacuation train car. Faces and scenes that are universally compelling and all tell a strong story of mental and physical fortitude. I encourage everyone to experience the exhibition, a year-long, poignant chronological story in descriptive words and photographs. A testament to what we already know and a way to give us all perspective. We are all inherently compassionate and empathetic and above all resilient. Resilience is the important and outcome, important uh, is a process and outcome of successfully adopting to difficult or challenging life experiences, especially through mental, emotional and behavioral flexibility and adjustment to external and internal demands. The demands of this war are immeasurable and we owe it to this beautiful country to bear witness to it. The exhibit is at Queen's Park until Friday when it will move to City Hall. The residents of Toronto and visitors to our city can see a mere sample of the enormous tragedy and hardships that have occurred, but also to be reminded of the resilience Ukraine demonstrates, the ability for endurance and the promise of recovery and for the future. Today, my heart is heavy knowing thousands have lost their lives to this violent war and over 14 million have been displaced from their homes. But we will never give up hope. I see a future where Ukrainians rebuild and return to their country without fear. Knowing their strength and resilience was a shining example to the rest of the world and myself and all Ontarians included. Slava Ukraine.